electric cars people still don't want to buy them and I, I i understand your pain uh much like me you probably are saying hey wait a second electric cars got better looking uh a bigger range faster charging uh so much better technology you know autopilot so many other things in i don't even mean better than electric cars used to be that's for sure i mean better than any car out there including all of these gas cars I really, really believe so. And this year in 2020, I can't believe we actually made it to 2020, but this year in 2020, there will be more really good electric cars on the market, not just from Tesla, which is going to be Model Y, but also from Ford, Byton, Lucid, and so many other brands. And yet, people don't want to buy them. I got to tell you, and you might not like it, so don't shoot the message here. I don't blame them. There are three things that I can still see holding people back from buying electric cars. We're gonna go over all three of them and uh, feel, feel free to get in there in the comment section and tell me what you think should be done about it. But again, don't forget, we're talking about regular people who are not buying cars because they, you know, they're, they're tree hoggers or, or the environmentalists or whatever. They just want to get from point E to, uh, to point A, from point A to point B, uh, and then maybe to point E, but, uh, you know, just drive their kids to school, get to work and so forth, right? So let's talk about those three. Before that, of course, if you like to be updated on all, all types of electric news, click on the subscribe button down over there and, and the, uh, the bell notification icon. That way you won't miss anything moving forward. All right. So let's get started, and I'm kind of going in a in a uh, in a order of priorities, but I think they're all important, right? So number three is uh, uh, dealerships, and I don't think I'm surprising anybody. If I am, then then here it is: dealerships don't want to sell electric cars. They might say they do, but honestly, they make money on uh, maintenance, and uh, electric cars don't need any maintenance, and therefore why sell them and that's another thing you know we blame oh you know people go like ah, those dealerships listen that's how they make money all right and so if you're running a business and this is how you always made money and all of a sudden this new thing comes out and all of a sudden you're no longer able to make money well people don't want it they they want to put a foot on, on on the table and and therefore this is pretty natural reaction now this is a picture of uh Nilo Audi dealership here in Sacramento, California. And um, this particular dealership, I took this picture on the day when they had uh, Audi e-tron, an all-electric SUV, uh, when they were kind of doing this showcase. And I realized they invited absolutely nobody to that event. Uh, the only reason I showed up and a few other people showed up is because the local electric car association found this out, sent out the messages and, and, and we showed up. Um, but as I was standing there, there were a couple of people who actually were genuinely interested in getting the Audi e-tron and there wasn't a single salesperson even close in the area to help this 12 15 people that we had which only tells you they don't want to sell it uh, now of course the manufacturers like you know Tesla and Neo and China they want to sell electric cars they don't have to deal with dealerships they can sell direct um, and um, I don't want to get into all these legal details but you know uh, because they've started from scratch and they don't have to uh, have dealerships they can sell direct yes there's still legal challenges in some states but overall they're able to well they're able to kind of bypass this this sort of a uh, obstacle uh, where where you know you have to sell your cars through people who don't want to sell your electric cars um now you know tesla is still relatively small even though they're selling out for all these cars they make but in the grand scheme of things tesla is still pretty small and also of course they don't advertise because they don't have to advertise so that's really all we have right now and so something has something's got to give um, I personally think that the way uh, brands should incentivize their dealerships is by letting them sell digital services, right? You buy this um, uh, Audi e-tron and we'll sell you Spotify, we'll sell you, you know, the app store, we'll, we'll sell you whatever, whatever services you, you can. Uh, in, in, in terms of Tesla, for example, in the case of Tesla, they've been selling autopilot. As a matter of fact, from what I understand, looking at their financials, they are like half a billion dollars uh, collected for the autopilot, which is a software service. Um, and that's what the dealership should be selling and therefore getting some percentages from it and therefore that's going to be their income uh, and of course you can you know give them a chunk of money up front for selling a service or uh, over a period of time as people making their monthly payments 
whatever. But I think that's actually not a bad way to go. Of course, the other way is to go and convince um, lawmakers that, you know, we don't need dealerships. On the other hand, there are real good reasons why dealerships were created. And it is actually to protect the consumers, believe it or not, kind of ironic. Um, so it's more complicated, but this is definitely one of the biggest reasons. All right, let's get to number two. Before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton, the brand that doesn't have to have dealerships that will sell these cars to you directly and even more reasons to make a reservation right now. Costs absolutely no money to do so, about a minute of your time, depending how fast you type. So uh, go to the description of this video and that way you can reserve your Byton today. Enjoy myself and tens of thousands of other people who've done that already. All right, so let's get to number two. And it is advertisement. I mean, if you're a regular Joe and you're watching TV, you're not likely to see advertisement for electric cars. Why? Well, first of all, <laughs> the, the problem goes back to dealers because most of the time when you see advertisement for cars is from your local dealers or dealer association. It is not always, or most of the time, it's not from the brand. It's not from Ford or GM and so forth. It's from the dealerships and therefore, why would they advertise electric cars, right? All right, so we understand that. But even when they do, and there are also a lot of uh, product placements are all, are all like, for example, this advertisement from Audi uh, that a lot of you probably have seen or familiar with. They uh, ran, they spent a lot of money. They ran this ad uh, during the Super Bowl. And uh, as you probably know, it's almost impossible to tell if they're advertising an, an electric car because there's like half a second of the guy actually unplugging it. And on top of that, they're actually advertising a car that is not even on the market, which is an e-tron GT. Boom. See, that's the moment. That's all. Otherwise, how do you know it's an electric car? Um, and, and again, don't forget, this car's not on the market yet. I test drove it. You can see it in, uh, in, on my channel. But um, while the e-tron, the SUV, is on the market and they, they haven't run a commercial during Super Bowl, same thing happened with Avengers movie and a few other ones. And uh, if you remember, not only they once again didn't put the SUV in and then put the the e -tron GT, they also added some of the uh, gas engine sound on top of that. So they're almost like ashamed of their own electric car. Uh, of course, there are other ads from Nissan. Now, Nissan has been a little bit more active in advertising their Nissan Leaf. But once again, if you watch their commercials, like they're just advertising like any normal car versus advertising uh, uh, this as an electric car and, and, and outlining one, all of the benefits of electric cars that we know, all the money savings, incentives and so forth, but also kind of shutting down the myths about electric cars that people are still kind of cringing on. And one of the reasons is the first generation Nissan Leaf that created all of these um, myths that are now myths, but they used to be true, right? Um, that the car, the electric cars are never good looking or they don't have a long range and, you know, other stuff that, you know, has kind of changed since then. So advertise, if you don't advertise, if people don't know about this, then how are they supposed to buy it? So until the word is going to be out on uh, some of these cars, <coughs> even I'm allergic to this ad, then, then I don't really see how people would want to buy them. All right. Uh, now let's get to number one. And just like I said, um, it, it, they, they are kind of in a priority in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in the order of priorities. But I really think that number one thing, and I think a lot of people struggle with this, even people who own electric cars, uh, they don't really know this, but charging infrastructure. Now, I know for Tesla owners, you know, they have the uh, superchargers and superchargers are pretty much everywhere in the United States, North America, Europe and China. Most routes are pretty much covered. If they're not, it's probably going to be done by the end of the uh, by the end of the year. So you're good. For non-Tesla users, um, they have Electrify America here in the United States, and there by the end of the next year, where there will be plenty of uh, electric cars that can be charged with CCS plugs. There will be also most of the United States is going to be covered uh, with this uh, fast chargers, and there's also EVgo. Uh, network that's that's been growing this this is actual location I took a picture of here in Sacramento I believe this is the first uh, curbside fast charging uh, location in California uh, but also in Europe there's Ionity also up to 350 uh, kilowatts just like Electrify America they've been covering all Europe all over the place so um, the the infrastructure for uh, for uh, long distance travel is pretty much there maybe a year away if you don't have a Tesla 
But here's the problem. It's the home charging. Of course, if you own your own home, you still have to spend some money and figure things out with electrician, but you can do it. However, most people don't own their own homes. As a matter of fact, a lot of them live in apartment complex. And uh, the, that, that, the, you, even the biggest apartment complexes in Silicon Valley, where, where there's tons and tons of Teslas and electric cars, this multi-million dollar ones where you pay $5,000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment, I'm not even kidding, by the way, even they don't still have dedicated charging stations um, at their spots, at, at, and that's a problem. If you live in an apartment complex or if you even own a condo without homeowners association permission or spending a lot of money, you just can't have an electric car. If you do, you have to go and charge or supercharge or fast charge um, that car uh, every few days or so, spending an hour sitting there. It's, it's not a good user experience. It's not a good ownership experience. And this is something that needs to it needs to be resolved, and I think, I, I okay, I, I don't understand why if you're spending tens of millions of dollars building a huge apartment complex, you don't want to spend a little bit extra money so you have more Tesla owners renting it from you. I don't get it, but I think it's going to come to uh, regulations and, and local laws where if you're building, and, and I think it's already started, I believe in Canada, don't quote me on that, but there is a country where, where it's either proposed or already passed, where um, basically it's a legislation that says if you're building an apartment complex, you have to put dedicated chargers in there for a certain uh, at, at a certain speed. Now, of course, charging at home doesn't really matter how fast you charge, but... You know, uh, uh, it, so so that's definitely a big problem. And um, now I do have to say that there is a, a a great way how you can charge your car extremely quick. And I, I gotta say, you know, when you're offering a new technology, people are always gonna be resistant. But if that technology is better in every single way than your old technology, then people will automatically and relatively fast will adopt it. Just look at an iPhone. The biggest problem with the technology of charging of electric cars is the fact that, you know, you can refuel um, a, a gas car much, much faster than you can refuel an electric car at the fastest possible charger. We're talking about three minutes versus 45 minutes. The only way to refuel an electric car uh, uh, in three minutes or less is the battery swapping station. And the only company that does it right now is Neo. And they do it in China, and there's quite a few of them right now, um, but um, they're not selling these cars or building the stations in Europe uh, or, or in America. It's just in China. I have to mention that Tesla has tried it at Harris Ranch, uh, Harris Ranch in uh, California, but then they decided to shut it down, kind of close the pro program, and Model 3 doesn't even have that cap capability. So I thought it was a great technology. Um, I know there's some you know, issues with it and obviously challenges, but that's really the only way to compete with gas cars until we get solid state batteries. In, um, and, and that's when it's gonna be much easier. So number these three are definitely being, being uh, 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 it's just, I, I don't even know how many years it will take for us to solve this because these are not, easy to solve problems um, and and especially if unless we get some help from some local laws uh, let me know in the comment section if you think that i missed one or maybe there's a better solution that i missed uh, let me know in the comment section of course i want to say thank you to all of my patreons supporting this channel and specifically one of my latest uh, uh members uh, marty brown thank you so much for joining me patreon and or watching me live this is this is um Something they can watch me live if you're a Patreon. Uh, if you want to become one, patreon.com slash e4electric. And if you're watching me on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, oh, shame on you. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button. And if you already have the bell notification icon, so you don't miss any of this amazing news, electric car news moving forward. All right. So let me hear it. Uh, and uh, let me know if you're in, a, in the market for electric car for the first time and, and what's holding you back. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.